actress, producer, director, and activist Eva Longoria is proud of her Mexican roots and deeply connected to the country that she calls her second home. Well, now, in a new CNN original series, Searching for Mexico, Longoria is following in the footsteps of Stanley Tucci, Searching for Italy, and she takes us across some of Mexico's 32 states to see how its people, its culture, its landscape, and history have shaped its diverse cuisine. Watch this. Hola. Hola, buenos días, bienvenida. Chocolates van con churros? Permítame. Gracias. This is El Moro. It's an institution in Mexico City. It's, you have to come here when you're in Mexico City. Churros and chocolate are a dream come true for my four-year-old son, Santi. This one, but softly. Soft, soft, soft. Slow. This is the chilango in the family. When it comes to food, we all have our guilty pleasures. For my son, it's chocolate and churros. <laughs> For every son, it is chocolate, chocolate made chocolate. better by churros. Yeah. Eva Longoria, the host of Searching with Mexico. Thank you for being here. Thanks Congratulations. For me. Thank you. It's a beautiful show. Yeah, that particular clip was like Santi on a sugar high for about three hours. I bet. I bet. Yeah. So look. <laughs> You can do anything. You've shown us that. <laughs> you really wanted to do this. Yeah. You called this the adventure of a lifetime. Yes. Why did you want to take on this project? Because you pitched it to well, CNN. Yes. Well, they, Stanley and, and Amy came to me, and they were like, we want to do a spinoff of... Amy and Tellis. Yes, yeah. of um, Searching for Italy, and we want to do another country. And I was like, you have to do Mexico. I was like, Mexico is like a jewel of gastronomy. I mean, it really yeah. is so beautiful in its food culture and it food is so rooted in everything in the country and uh and so i pitched her on mexico not so much uh, uh me i was like you should do mexico somebody should do it but mexico is like the place you should do next and uh and then they said yes and i was like oh gosh now i have to do it but it was and you so did fun. it for and I did four, it. Months four months straight yes you brought your four-year-old, <laughs> yeah. which we got to see him there. Yes, and you know, my husband, we live in Mexico City, yeah. and my husband's from Mexico City, and, and he went with me kind of on the six different states, and even he was like, where am I? Like, what is that? Like, he was introduced because to a, a whole Because you discovered a lot. Yeah. When it, when searching is truly what you did. You discovered yeah. a lot. Even though you call it your second home, yeah. there were so many things about it that you yeah. didn't know. No, and you know, I think the identity of Mexican cuisine is like tacos, tequila, tacos, tequila, yeah. which they do very well, <laughs> and I'm all for it. But there's so much more, and the country's so diverse. What I was struck by in this is also the pride that you showed on full display in mm -hmm. each of the states you went to. Yeah. That was important for you to highlight. 1,000%. Yeah. I don't think there was a day I didn't cry from somebody's storytelling. And the way they tell stories through their food is amazing. And if you're talking about food, that's the easiest entry point to any culture. You call yourself a Texican, born in Texas <laughs> with Mexican roots. But you've also talked about what's been um, a significant part of your life and also really difficult at times, straddling the hyphen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when I'm in here in the United States, I'm, they're like, oh, you're Mexican. And then I'm in Mexico, and they're like, oh, you're the American. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm one of you, too. You know, and, uh, especially you know, being married to a Mexican national, you know, it's, it's really, my household's very fun. Like, we argue about flour tortillas versus corn tortillas. And flour all the way. Flour what you? all the way. All the way. But that's because we're Americans. <laughs> <laughs> that is truly not a true Mexican. We have this fight all the time. Um, but it's, it's really, um, I love uh, uh, my heritage and my culture and my roots. Yeah. And, uh, and this show really gave me a deeper appreciation for that side of, of my family. Um, and I think it's going to give people a deep appreciation for the country. So I want to talk even outside of the series about your evolution and, and your purpose, because, okay. you know, I think I came to know you from Desperate Housewives. Yes. Just incredible. Didn't miss an episode. Right. <laughs> and you became this famous actress. At the same time on that journey, you became and continue to be a loud voice for rights, for what you believe in, mm -hmm. and also standing up for the voiceless many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. uh, your sister Elizabeth, who was born with special needs, yeah. has been a big inspiration to you. Yeah. How do you think about purpose at this stage in your life? Well, you know, I was lucky to grow up in a family that 
exposed me to volunteerism very early. My earliest memories are Special Olympics. I remember my mom made us go and be huggers at the Special Olympics. She made us volunteer at the Salvation Army, at the Boys and Girls Club. Every Thanksgiving, we had to go to the soup kitchen first before we had our Thanksgiving. Good like, mom. She's great, I mean, amazing mom. So she didn't um, teach me how mm -hmm. to be philanthropic or an advocate, she showed me. It was just part of expected. who we were. It was absolutely expected. So before I was famous, this was my work. Yeah. This was my life's mission. Um, and because I have a special needs sister, like our whole family was so selfless and everything revolved around her needs, what she needed, what was gonna improve her quality of life. And, uh, and that's a gift. I love that you, despite all the fame, you then went back to school. Yeah. You went to get your master's in Chicano studies. Mm -hmm. And you 